all right so good to be back welcome back to my channel my name is Setson. in today's video we're going to look at laravel crud for beginners all right so let's look at what is crud and what is laravel so crud is an acronym to the four basic operations that you can perform on a database so c is for create r is for read u is for update and then the d is for deleting the data all right so yeah uh, so laravel is a popular open source php framework used for web application development so it's similar to frameworks like django for python or ruby on rails why laravel well laravel is robust and easy to understand it also saves a lot of time if you're planning to develop a website from scratch a website built in laravel is secure and prevents several web attacks and so you should consider all these advantages and go with laravel for your web application development let's look at objectives of this lesson we're going to learn the laravel basics we're also going to learn crud operations we're going to learn the blade templating language learn the mvc architecture and then we're going to learn how to use PHP in a practical sense. What you should already know, you should already know some PHP and some HTML. We're going to need ZAMP, we're also going to need a text editor, we're also going to need Composer, and we're also going to need Laravel. All right, so let's take a look at these required tools one by one. So first up, ZAMP. What is ZAMP? ZAMP is a software stack that allows developers to easily test their web applications locally. Locally means on their computer at each letter in ZAMP. So X stands for cross-platform. The software works on multiple platforms like Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. A is for Apache. Apache is a popular open source web server software. And then we have M for MariaDB, uh, which is a database server. Originally, it was MySQL, so you can use MySQL or MariaDB. And then the first P is for PHP, which is going to be the language that we're going to be using. So it's a server-side scripting language used for web development. And then Perl. Uh, Perl is a high-level general-purpose programming language. Alright, so for us to install ZAMP on our computers, if you already have ZAMP installed on your computer, you can skip and move on to the next part of this tutorial. But for those who do not have ZAMP already installed on their computers, this is how you install ZAMP on your computer and click on this link right here. Uh, and we want to go to this website. So it's, uh, it's Apache Friends. So www.apachefriends.org. And so I'm going to click on this link. It will take me to this web page right here. And so you can see we can download ZAMP for Windows, ZAMP for Linux or ZAMP for mac os and so depending on the platform that you're on you can download one of these installers i recommend that you download the latest version of zamp by the time of recording this video the latest version is 8.2.12 you could also if you have access to that web page by searching for zamp download right here so if you search for zamp download you can check out this link right here apache friends and then you can click on that it will take you to the same website and go ahead and download one of these installers and once you finish then we can go through the step-by-step -step installation process i am going to go to where my zamp installer has been downloaded to it's inside my software downloads right here you can see right here to install zamp we can double click on the installer i'm going to double click on the installer and then then this window pops up you click on yes and then again click on yes right here and then okay and then this will pop up and then click on next leave as default and then click on next and then this is the path to where ZAMP is going to be installed I don't want it to be installed in the C drive I want it in the D drive but you might leave it as it is right here I'm going to go to my D drive because that's where I want my ZAMP installed and then here I have to say ZAMP as well right here the name of the folder where ZAMP is going to be installed is called ZAMP I have to specify it right here because I should change the path all right so click on next and then here the language english click on next and then here setup is now ready to begin so link zamp on your computer click next All right, so it looks like we've finished installing ZAMP. It says completing the ZAMP setup. And so we have to click finish right here. Click on finish. And then it's going to pop up this control panel. All right, so this is our ZAMP control panel, uh, which shows we successfully installed ZAMP on our computers. All right, so we can start in one of these services. So I want to test whether these services are working. And so let's start with Apache. And so click on that. You can see Apache is now running, apparently. And so you can see by this green background here, on the word apache this button is now showing stop instead of start that means we are running apache if you want to confirm you can click on admin and then it will take you to this web page right here we also want to test my sql click on start 
you can see we have a problem right here it says error my sql shutdown is unexpectedly this may be due to a blocked port missing dependencies improper privileges a crash or whatever this could be as a result of uh, quite a number of reasons but let's try this blocked port and see whether this could be the problem right so what we can do is we go into our config so my sql config click on config and then you can see there is my dot ini click on that and then it will open in notepad by default and so we're going to change this port number right here and also this port number so i'm going to change that to 3307 as well as right here 3307 and then once i change that i'm going to save that and i'll minimize this and I'll once again try and run this but now you can see my sql is not running if for some reason your apache and my sql is not running then you have to try and run zamp as an administrator so you open zamp you go to zamp right click on zamp and say run as administrator right here all right so with this done we know our zamp is running and we are good to go what i'm going to do is for now i'm going to stop all these services and i'm going to minimize this now we want to move on to the next one the next one is quite easy it's a text editor you have a number of options a text editor is just a type of program used for editing plain text files so in the context of programming text editors provide developers with an interface to write and edit code they often come uh, with a number of features these include syntax highlighting line numbering and auto in indentation etc and this makes the process of writing code easier and more efficient and so examples of text editors include notepad sublime text atom and visual studio code and so the one that i recommend in this tutorial is visual studio code and for you to download visual studio code you have to go to this link right here visit this website so code.visualstudio.com i'll click on this link it will take me to this web page right here or you could just go to the browser and you just search for vs code download right here click on that and then you go to this link right here download video studio code click on that and this web page will open it's the same as the one that we opened right here and so what we want to do is you want to download any one of these installers so depending on the platform that you're on windows uh, linux or mac os go ahead and download and then you run the installation it's quite straightforward quite easy uh, the next thing the next two that we want to install on our computers is a tool called composer so what is composer so composer is a tool for dependent Dependence management in PHP. So just like we have NPM for Node, PIP for Python, uh, we have Composer for PHP. It allows you to declare libraries your project depends on and it will manage those libraries for you. So it will install and update those libraries. In the context of Laravel, Composer is used to manage all its dependencies when you create a new Laravel project. So Composer is used to download all the packages and libraries that Laravel depends on. So to download Composer, we uh, yet again have to visit the this website right here so we click on this link getcomposer.org so i'm going to click on that it will take me into this web page right here uh, you could also access it by going to your search engine right here and write composer download you have to go to this link right here download composer click on that and it will take you to the same page as this one i'm on a windows computer and so i can see there's a windows installer right here and i can go ahead and click this to download i already have it on my computer so i don't need to click on this to download it uh, but you can go ahead and click and download this it won't take long and then you are good to go once you have that installer downloaded double click on that select the first one which says install for all users click on that click yes and next this is the path to your php it's automatically detected here but if it's not automatically detected you have to find where your zam folder is and then find the php folder and then select the php executable and then click on next and next and install Stop. <laughs> All right click on next again and then finish all right so yeah we have successfully installed composer to test so whether you're successfully installed composer you just go to your terminal right here my terminal is right here and then in, in here you want to type composer dash capital letter v and run that you can see we have a version of composer is 2.7.3 and the php version which is 8.2.12 composer is the pre-requirement for installing laravel laravel is a popular open source php framework like i said earlier on used for web application development it follows the mvc architectural pattern so it provides an expressive elegant syntax and is designed for developers who need a simple and elegant toolkit to create full 
featured web applications. Laravel has tools for routing, authentication, sessions, caching, and more, making it easier for developers to start and maintain their workflow. So for us to install Laravel, we have to visit this link right here. It will take us to this Laravel website. Or you could just search for Laravel right here and click on Laravel right here and this first link, click on that link. And of course, it will take you to this web page and then click on documentation and then you have it here, right here so you can see right here you can click on this drop down you can see the different versions all right so we want to go with the latest version which is 11x right so uh, we want to check out how we can install laravel and so we want to rely on the documentation which is a guide to how you're supposed to use laravel all right so right here you can see we need a composer of which we have composer already installed on our computers and it says composer create project and then laravel forward slash laravel and then the name of our application i'm going to copy this command right here and so want to use it in our terminal so what i'm going to do is all of my projects i am going to place them inside the zamp folder which is a good standard practice so we need to locate our zamp folder uh, mine is in the d drive yours could be in the c drive so you see this zamp folder right here go to ht docs double click to open and this is where you want to place your projects right here so you can have multiple laravel projects all right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create my project right here so i want to open this in the terminal so once i open that in the terminal you can see the path here says in i'm in my d in my zamp in my ht docs all right so want to paste that command which is composer create project and then laravel for slash uh, however uh, my application is not going to be called example uh, app it's going to be called crad dash app let's try and run I, I'm, I'm not too sure if this is going to work there is an error which usually uh, happen when you try and run it like this but it's okay uh, we'll then learn from there how to fix that error if i run this yes. so you can see it says failed to download laravel laravel from disks the reason is because the zip extension commands are both missing so it's keeping it's coming from the d drive zamp php and php dot i and i and so we need to go into this file and then uncomment the extension zip directive which is commented out and so what i'm going to do is i'm going to locate this file uh from here i'm going to go into php which is that one and then locate this file php.ini i'm going to right click and then i'm going to edit in notepad and the directive that i'm looking for so i'm, I'm going to press ctrl f extension equals zip and then look for that you can see this line right here and what we want to do is we want to remove that colon which is a comment in this file and we have uncommented this and we're going to control s to save that and once we have that saved i'm going to go back let me see i'm going to go back into my ht docs right we, even though we failed to download laravel but we had created a, a folder called crud app and so we want to get rid of this and then start afresh so what i'm going to do is i'm going to delete that folder here and then go back to my terminal right here i'm going to clear everything and now i can rerun that command right now so if i hit on enter now because we uncommented that line and laravel is going to install you can see right here we no longer have that error uh, showing up uh, oh. we have uh successfully installed laravel right here so i'm going to clear right here and what i'm going to do is i, I, I want to uh ls to see what is here so you can see we have our crud app right here so we want to cd into that crud app right up once we are inside here we want to open this in vs code and so i'm going to say code space dot which means open visual studio code in the current directory and so this will open visual studio code and so what i'm going to do is i'm going to close this terminal right here and i'm also going to close this terminal right here because we no longer need that visual studio code comes with its own inbuilt terminal and so that's the one that we're going to be using so I'm going to close this welcome and you can see all these files that have been auto generated for us is we want to run our project and see whether it's working and so for us to do that we need some kind of a command so how to run commands in laravel so the command line interface used in laravel is called artisan so we're going to use the artisan yeah. to run our commands in laravel so it includes a set of commands which assists in building a web application
application one of those commands is running the server so that you can check your web application in the browser so we need to run this command php artisan serve which serves your laravel application on the php development server so to do this uh, look for terminal right up here new terminal and inside here we're going to run php artisan serve to serve and then if i run this you can see it says server running on this local host 8000 this is the port port 8000 so i'm going to follow this link if i click on this link you can see our laravel applications running so this is the default page that comes uh, with the laravel application when you first install it and so we can see we have successfully installed laravel you can see right here it says we have installed version 11.4 and the php version 8 is the one that is running and you can see we are here on the local host port 8000 all right so we have everything in place uh, everything is working and we are good to go all right so in our next tutorial we're going to look at uh, what is the mvc architecture obviously we're going to look at the laravel M mvc architecture and see how all this comes together to create a functional uh, web application so with that um we have come to the end of this tutorial if you find this helpful please consider subscribing to the channel leave a like leave a comment and i hope to see you in my next tutorial for now i'm out bye bye